Hello, friend, and welcome back. We are continuing our series of Niche Beauty Lab products. Uh, today we are doing the Theramid Dermapeptides 22% Multipeptide Treatment. Let's just dive in because this is a pretty dense product review because peptides are very interesting and I fell down more than one rabbit hole doing some research for this. So this is a 22% by volume peptide blend in a very lovely silky light lotion texture. Uh, it does spread quite nicely. It blends in quite nicely. A um, little bit of a kind of almost coconutty lotion smell, but there is no coconut in here as far as I know and uh, no fragrance added. So it's just the natural smell of the product. Um, yeah, let's talk about packaging briefly before we dive into all of the peptides in the formula. I loved the packaging for the copper peptide product from this brand. This is the exact opposite. So it's a lovely, beautiful glass bottle, um, but it is truly just a straw and pump design. So, so you can see this last probably quarter of the bottle, I have had to you know, tap it on my the palm of my hand or on the counter to get the product to kind of level out so that the straw can suck it up. It is so thick that if you flip it over, it's not going anywhere, so it's also not going to settle at the bottom of this very well. So it does make it very annoying to get the last bit of product out. The glass bottle makes it easy to recycle if you rinse it out and disassemble the components, so that's wonderful. But I just wish they had gone the route that they did with other products and put that little vacuum seal vinyl bag in there so that you can get every drop out and it also does a little bit better job of limiting air exposure to the product so it keeps it more stable. It is very pretty, looks nice on the shelf and for like the first two thirds or so it works really well. Few of the non-peptide ingredients. Uh, it does use phenoxyethanol as a preservative which is just fine. Uh, it's probably the most common preservative right now during our, our paraben backlash time period. It works just fine to keep the microbes out and uh, does not tend to irritate the skin. Up high in our ingredient list, it does have jojoba esters, uh, macadamia seed extract, sunflower seed extract, and moringa oils. So that's awesome. Uh, all those are nice nourishing oils with good fatty acids. So we love to see that. It is part of what makes this brand really awesome. They don't just put in one superstar ingredient. They include a lot of good ingredients to make it a well-rounded formula for most skin types. It also has lactobacillus ferment lysate. Uh, it's, it's just a specific kind of probiotic. So it does have some research that shows that your epidermal growth, so like skin cell growth, is improved when it's exposed to this probiotic regularly. So hooray, just another way that they are encouraging uh, healthy skin through all of the ingredients and not just one or two superhero ingredients. Okay, let's talk about peptides. Uh, peptides are chains of amino acids that are cell communicating ingredients, so they are gonna go in and tell your cells to do something. I'm gonna keep my notes close at hand because this gets a little dense even for me, but I did fall down several rabbit holes, so like I said, <laughs> I did some research. I wanna make sure that I'm communicating all of it adequately. Uh, the first little bundle of peptides we're going to talk about are the growth factor peptides. Uh, this one has a blend of five growth factor peptides called bioplacenta. These growth factors, growth factors really just are a category of peptide that tell skin cells to do something special, uh, whether it is build up more collagen or more elastin or improve the environment for skin cells. It is a biomimetic peptide that's going to do those things. Uh, this particular blend focuses on cell proliferation, so more skin cells, and wound healing, as well as increasing blood supply to the skin cells so that they have a healthier environment. We will circle back at the end about who might not want to use this product, but uh, we do get into some, some issues with that cell proliferation, so just stay tuned. Matrixyl is a pretty common name in peptides and especially in skincare. There are a few of them now, but it is a brand. Uh, Matrixyl 3000 is one of the peptide blends that's included in this product. That 
particular blend of peptides is two peptides, one being a collagen one fragment. So it is meant to uh, trick the body into seeing, oh gosh, there's this little fragment of collagen that must mean it got broken down somewhere. So we need to send resources and start rebuilding. So it sort of pretends there was a wound so that your body will jump into action and do some good repair of the collagen in the area that it's found. And then the other side of it is uh, interleukin-6, or just an inflammatory marker, and it helps decrease that uh, inflammatory marker. So that other part of that peptide duo will help your body not get so inflamed, not irritated, um, and just moderate some of that process. Because there's a whole host of um, not great for collagen things that come with inflammation. So it helps limit that. That's Matrixyl 3000. There's also Matrixyl Synth 6. Uh, it is a single peptide that helps boost the major components of skin. Uh, so that's helping with like hyaluronic acid that's naturally produced, collagen synthesis of various different kinds of uh, collagen, as well as just the, it's called the extracellular matrix. So the stuff around the outside of the cell to make sure that that um, soil is good and providing the right nutrients and gets enough blood supply and all the things. So um, just helping for a, a good environment to have healthy cells. That's awesome. In a study, 2% uh, concentration was used for two months daily. It wasn't a real big study or a long study, but here we go. And take this with a grain of salt. It did show significant to total resolution of forehead and crow's feet lines and wrinkles. So in some people, they saw it completely smooth out. In some people, it was like a 30 to 40% reduction. So that's awesome. It does show that uh, the, the health of skin is improving. It is something that has some good promising evidence. The other matrixel that they have in here is matrixel morphomics. I wasn't real familiar with this one. It's sort of a newer peptide, uh, but same goal. It, ha it wants to boost collagen and the extracellular components, as well as helping with uh, skin structure. It does show that it helps uh, normalize cell structures so that um, skin and collagen fibers and all of the components in there act a little more normally and a little more regimented, which should result in just healthier skin. Those are most of the peptides in here. There's only one left, and this one is what caught me by surprise. It is acetyl hexapeptide 1. Now, I have seen this uh, advertised as Botox in a bottle. There are plenty of neuropeptides that act on muscles that try to reduce muscle contraction so that um, our dynamic areas like forehead, frowners, crow's feet, any of those big scrunchy areas that tend to get lines when you express yourself, those lines are minimized when you have a uh, neuroactive peptide. So something that's gonna slow down that muscle contraction, make it not quite as strong. I've always had mixed feelings about this because it doesn't seem like topically applied products should be able to affect muscles. That so seems like we're crossing into a dangerous territory. There's, there's a lot that goes into this. So that's how I knew acetyl hexapeptide one as a Botox in the bottle. Um, it'll limit some of that muscle contraction so that your high traffic dynamic areas do not scrunch as much, similar to how Botox acts and thereby reducing the amount of lines that are there and it'll prevent you from making them worse. Hooray, sounds perfect, right? When I went to do some research on this, I started seeing uh, a different brand name or a trade name that was used in some countries and it is to increase your melanin production. Um, so fell down that rabbit hole and found that, uh, yeah, it is the same acetyl hexapeptide one that is just marketed a little bit differently. So it appears that it can do both things. That just gives me pause yet again for most of those interested in, in skincare, at least in Western um, world, I suppose. We typically look for brighter skin um, and to fade dark spots and minimize melasma, um, even out skin tone. And this would encourage those melanocytes that make melanin or the pigment in your skin to uh, produce more melanin. So that would make 
your dark spots darker, hypothetically. Um, make melasma darker, which is not usually the goal. And I could see in somebody with kind of perfect pigmentation that yes, if you had a little bit more melanin to it, that it might look like a nice glow. Uh, but that just, that gives me pause that it has both uses and they're marketing it for both things. Here in this product, they're just marketing it as this being something to help reduce um, dynamic lines. But I would caution anyone who is doing a brightening regimen, myself included, I was kind of shocked to find this, that yeah, you might not want to use this particular product or something with that particular peptide in it because it might be making your journey a little bit longer than it needs to uh, towards brightening the skin or fading dark spots because it's just amping those melanocytes up a little bit more. Now, on the flip side, it does show that it also limits another interleukin, uh, the inflammatory pathway for skin, so it helps to decrease inflammation that comes from UV radiation. That's awesome. If we're getting UV radiation or just exposure to the sun, we want to make sure that it's protected with antioxidants, with sunscreen, anything we can to help limit free radical damage to the cells. So this would theoretically help with some of that. It's difficult to measure, but just keep that in mind. Okay, was that uh, dense enough for you? That's all the peptides that are in this product. Great blend of things initially. I just worry about that one ingredient for the majority of skincare users that might not want to increase their melanin production. I just wouldn't take the chance and there's so many other options. Even the copper peptide blend from this brand does not include that. One more cautionary note about growth factors. Now this is not medical advice not going down that road, but I just want you to know kind of what the research says. Those with psoriasis or those with pre-cancer, uh, especially pre-skin cancer or true cancerous lesions or a history of cancerous lesions of the skin, I would recommend you avoid growth factors altogether. In psoriasis or patients who have history of cancer, something like an epidermal growth factor could encourage those cancerous cells to go faster um, and just proliferate even more. It won't turn a normal cell into a cancerous cell, but those rowdy cells that are already unhinged, it can adversely influence them and make them grow faster. So I would avoid it with any history of skin cancer, any precancerous lesions, and anyone who has psoriasis because that's an overgrowth of skin cells in its own way. So let's just skip that. There are plenty of other options that can help you find youthful, bouncy, happy skin without potentially irritating or exacerbating those conditions. Briefly, some of the other ingredients uh, that we see, uh, sodium hyaluronate or hyaluronic acid, um, a ceramide, it has some AHAs in there. So like lactic acid and malic acid. Um, the pH of this product is not at the right level for exfoliation of skin cells. It is, thankfully they tell us this, but it is 5.5 to 5 for a pH. And exfoliation with alpha hydroxy acids really needs to be somewhere between 3.4 and 3.9. So we're nowhere near that realm, but lactic acid and other alpha hydroxy acids do act as nice water binding ingredients. So hydration uh, when they are out of their exfoliation range. So this is still a gentle product. Um, we also want to try to avoid strong acids with anything with peptides in it, unless you truly know that it's okay to use them together. That includes things like, uh, scorbic acid. So vitamin C, like really strong vitamin C, alpha hydroxy acids that are meant for exfoliation, just avoid them at the same time. So split them up one during the day and one at night. Otherwise, if you aren't using strong acids in your routine, you can use this product twice a day, and that's great. Last but certainly not least, this is 37 US dollars for 1.01 fluid ounces or 30 milliliters. Uh, it is available from Niche Beauty Lab directly. Uh, I don't know of any other retailers that are selling it, at least not in the US at this point. Oh, and uh, I did enjoy using it. Uh, other than the packaging problems, I did feel like I saw smoother skin, I don't know about the like pigment darkening piece of things. I wasn't paying attention to that, um, but 
I have since decided that I probably will not finish this off just because of that pigment and I'm always chasing hyperpigmentation. So otherwise it was a lovely product, very lightweight, played nice with others. And um, yeah, I will see you on the next review. Thanks so much for spending some time with me. Take care.